Think of, see the color blue on artificial turf in a football stadium in the context of college entertainment services, they think of Boise State. And we did. So here are some, I talked about, I beat to death my patent tricks. Patent pending doesn't mean anything, the whole publication nightmare, the whole thing about it's just a license to sue. Those are all the dirty little secrets. Trust me on this, just for kick, just for a kick some time, just call a patent attorney. Call, just call a patent attorney. Say you want to get a patent and see if they give you this discussion or see if they just say, well, okay, we need a $5,000 retainer and we'll file a patent application for you. Just try it sometime and see. Just see, okay? All right, now we talked about the, pay, the patent tricks. Here are some of the trademarks tricks. I think we talked about this. Trademark is not a verb, it's a noun. We talked about that. Rights accrue through use. We talked about that. Smartymakers.com. Use and registration are two different things. Well, I think we talked about that too, didn't we? So, what questions do you have about trademarks, Dean? Who do you register with? Is it like the Trade Commission, Federal Trade Commission, or you register with the uh, United States Patent and Trademark Office? See the second line there. Oh, okay. Thanks, sir. Can you register in advance of using it? Right. You're planning on doing something. You want for, you know as much protection yeah. as you can no. get before you start. It, it's a good question, and the answer is in, in 1989 they changed the law, and in the United States you may file what's called an intent to use trademark registration application. That means that you've sort of placed, drawn a line in the sand and said, at some point in the near future, I intend to commence use of this thing as a trademark. I haven't begun using it yet, and as you now know, you don't have a trademark until you use it, because trademark isn't a verb, it's a noun. It springs into existence when you use something as a trademark to create source identification. So yeah, you can file the paperwork today and hold your place in line for three and a half years, and then when you commence use, you'll get you can get a registration certificate. Or you can start using it and get a trademark at a later date. I mean, you can start using a name or. Let me put it. Let me re recast your question. You have a common law trademark right immediately upon use. You may at some point choose to seek to register that trademark, sure, but you don't have to. And you may seek to register a trademark in an individual class and get it, have a registered trademark, and then at a later date find that you want to expand where you right. are using it and go file for another class. If you have use. If you have use. In those classes. So her, Carol, uh, Carol's question is very good. Let me just quickly to elaborate on that just a little bit. I filed an application to register with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, the trademark, I don't even remember what it was. We'll, call, we'll say Clean Sweep. Clean Sweep was the mark, and I sought to register it as a trademark for toothpaste and toothbrushes. So I sent in my application. I said, this is a trade, this is going to be a trademark for toothpaste and toothbrushes. They wrote back and said, you need to send us more money because toothpaste and toothbrushes are in two separate what are called international classes. So the trademark office divides things up into these things called international classes. And you have to file a wholly separate application in each representative class. So there you go. So as your use expands, so for example, when Apple has an idea for a new product, there are 49 international classes, 47 or 48, 49. When Apple comes up with an idea for a new product, they immediately file 49 intent to use trademark registration applications to cover all of the classes. Of course they do. So even if they don't use all 49, who cares, right? They let 29 of them go and they have registrations in 20 of the classes. So big, this is how big companies sort of preempt the field in the trademark space is by filing a whole boatload of intent to use registration applications. So quick summary, if you have something that serves to identify your goods or services, you'll have a common law trademark right, which you may then seek to register with the federal government if you wish. You don't have to. It's better, in my view, to have a registration than a common law trademark for a variety of reasons, which we won't go into right now, but a registration is probably better if you, can, if you have the time and the inclination to try to get a registration on your trademark. Okay. Tra trademark tricks? Yeah, go ahead. Um, trademarks are also regional, right? So U.S., if you want it international, you need to register in other countries as well. Yes? Well, yes. The, the general answer is yes. But there are some things that permit you to make a centralized filing and have broader coverage than with, than with patents. There's a thing called the Patent Cooperation Treaty that lets you file and get coverage in multiple states, well, multiple foreign countries. And then the trademark realm, there's a thing called the Madrid Protocol that permits you to do that as well. And you can get coverage in a whole lot of countries at one time. 
But generally speaking, yes, a, a registered trademark in the United States will do you no good in another country. Unless, this is a hard question, let me test your knowledge, unless what? Unless they have some kind of common law trademark in place in that country. And very good, that's exactly right. And, and, and you have used it. Yeah, that's exactly, well, you guys are sharp. That's exactly right, yeah, very good. So if that country has a common law trademark scheme, and some countries don't, China doesn't. China's what's called the first to file trademark registration. So it doesn't matter who's using it first. It's the first guy to file the trademark registration application. A little bit of information in case you plan on doing any business in China. You should be running out registry your trademarks in China right now. <laughs> but some countries like the United States, Canada, most of the like common law countries like follow the UK system, Australia, they actually are, they recognize common law rights and it's a first to use jurisdiction. So that's a very good insight. You two get high marks for figuring that out. Well done. What does filing in the US cost? Well, Register. yeah, to simply, okay, let's use our Smarty Maker hypothetical. So now we've got common law trademark rights because we've used it as a service mark, done deal. We decide to file a federal trademark registration application in class, it would be actually class 37 as a service mark, that's what it would be. It would cost $325 to file a federal intent to use trademark registration application. And then at some future point, we'd have to spend another couple of hundred dollars to adduce evidence of use if we filed it on an ITU basis. But here, since we have use, we could actually file a use-based application, right? We would literally send in a screenshot of our website you know, capture it as a JPEG or a PDF, upload it to USPTO.gov, get my credit card for 325, bada bing. We got a filed intent to use trademark registration application on smartymakers.com. Okay, other trademark questions? Okay, a couple of thoughts about domain names. You guys all know what domain names are. This slide just always pops in there because some people don't fully know what they are, but in general, domain names are the thing to the right of the dot in a domain, in an internet address. Things directly to the right of the dot are called top-level domains, and then to the left, they're called second-level domains. So for example, look down there at the, the, uh, the, the fourth bullet point. In the United States, we have what are called generic top-level domains, .com, .net, .org, .info, .mobi, .us. Those are called generic top-level domains. In other countries, however, they have what are called country code top-level domains. There are about 400 of those. So for example, you would have .tw, which means a website that is associated with the country of Taiwan, UK, United Kingdom, and so on and so forth, right? So, for example, just as Apple goes out and files 49 intent to use trademark registration applications, Apple also goes out and files 450, they register 450 domain names. All of the generic top level domains, .com, .net, .org, .info, .us, .mobi, .me, I can't remember them all, there were 22, plus all of the CCTLDs because they have the money to do it. And that's just what they do. So what I love though, I always like to point this out, Instagram and Delicious were very clever. Know what they did, how they used a country code top level domain as part of their trademark. So they got Instagram with the country code top level domain. Anybody know what .am is? Armenian. And delicious.us, that's of course a generic top level domain, not a country code top level domain. So I love it when people get trademarks like that that incorporate a CCTLD or a GTLD. I think that's very clever. But Instagram also has Instagram.com. They got them both, of course. All right, so here are some domain name tricks. Since we're all about tricks today, whenever you go out to register a domain name, my advice is to not look to see if it's available and then go back later to get it. Because some domain name companies engage in a practice called front running, which means that they know when you search a domain name, and when they see it's been searched, they will register it. Because they know that you'll probably come back and try to register it tomorrow. And instead of it being freely available for $8, you now have to buy it from the unscrupulous front runner for $100 or $200 or whatever the case may be. So I always advise clients to, if you're gonna register a domain name, spend the eight bucks and register the domain name. Don't just go look, because you'll get hit, sometimes you'll get hit by a front runner, yeah. I do a video production of web design, and I have a lot of different clients and stuff. And, uh, I, like they'll have domain names and then they don't pay and then they think that it's really easy to just go back right. and get it but there's companies that totally just buy them up <clears> right. and then turn around and try to sell it to you for like five to ten thousand dollars well so, so well said so, domain name so, so the second piece of the advice would be don't check it and come back later register it initially yeah and then don't forget to renew it yeah do because it for, I like, get three or four years because of what I do I get emails every day from 10 different domain name registration companies with a list of domain names that are expiring. And so if I was less scrupulous, I would simply go out and register all those domain names. 
and hold on to them until the aggrieved former owner yeah. comes to me begging to have their domain name back. And it seems like it's uh, a lot of coming from China that are just buying yeah. up right. expired domain names. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about front running, a picket fence strategy. My view is that, let's again go back to Smarty Makers. So if we were going to have a trademark in Smarty Makers, we've got a common law trademark in it right, we've now filed our use-based federal trademark registration application, smartymakers.com. Um, we would then go out and we would also get associated domain names to prevent somebody from going out and getting smartymakers.net or .org or .info or .mobi or .us because those guys are called cyber squatters. And what they will do is they will anticipate the domain names that you're going to need based on your new trademark filings because that's a public filing, right? When we filed Smarty Makers with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, it was public. Unlike patents, trademarks, as I should make this point, Patents were secret for 18 months until they're published. Trademarks are not. You know immediately when somebody files a new trademark registration application because it's public. And you can do a search that gives you a list of all the trademark registration applications filed today by doing a delimited search at USPTO.gov if you know how to do it. So then you simply see all the new trademarks that have been sought to be filed or registered and you go out and you get all the domain names if you're unscrupulous. And people are, right? And so thus, Picket fence means once you know what your trademarks can be, Smarty Makers, you would go out and you would register 20, I advise 20, to sort of picket fence around your flagship trademark. .com, .net, .org, .ca, Canada, .mx, Mexico, .uk, UK, .au, Australia. 20 is what I typically recommend as a picket fence. And it's not horribly expensive. It's like eight bucks to register a domain name. Some countries are more. So again, it just depends, again, we go back to my very first comment, it depends on how proprietary you are about your intellectual property. You may not care that you register smartymakers.com and then two days later you can't get .net and .org, you may simply not care. I care, 